Today we explore the new U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota that is being considered a modern architectural masterpiece with the use of a unique ETF roof and the largest pivoting doors in the world. Chairman and CEO of Thornton Thomas City, Tom Scarangello, gives us a look inside the process of completing this project. The overlying premise for the stadium was they wanted to have a stadium that, while they were playing indoors, felt like they were outdoors. Because in Minnesota, they really like to play football outdoors. The stadium that they'd been in for years really had no, did, did not make you feel at all like you were outdoors. Um, but when it's minus 10 degrees, they may not really want to feel like they're outdoors. So it, it was what I call, they wanted a weather agnostic stadium. Uh, and that was really the performance requirement. And that's really what we designed to. Initially, their thinking was that they wanted to have an, a, just a traditional retractable roof stadium, which you see many football stadiums. Um, but we, you know, we quickly um, kind of convinced them that they should be considering other options because if what they were really looking for was a weather agnostic stadium where you felt like you were outdoors, opening up a hole in the roof like a traditional football stadium retractable roof really wasn't going to accomplish that. In that case, we have the North America's largest ETFE roof. And this is a material that is actually very transparent, um, can essentially make you feel like you're outside. It's so transparent that UV rays go through it. And you literally have to, if you're inside, you have to, and it's a sunny day, you're gonna need, you're gonna need sunblock because you can get a suntan inside. In addition, in order for this to feel open, you couldn't just let you, you to see the sky. You had to feel the air moving and you had to feel like you were outside if you wanted to feel like you're outside, if the conditions were right. So we actually designed and incorporated the large, world's largest pivoting um, doors, which are 95 by 50 feet, 55 foot wide, a series of them they can open up and let in the outside in. Um, if you want the outside in, if you don't, you can, you can keep it and you can let the sun heat up the space. So we used existing technology, but in a really in a new, and in some ways a radical way. That was the challenge. And using technology, not just the technology to analyze and deliver it, but using the latest technology was really key to making that happen. And again, coordinating them and incorporating them in a way that hadn't been done before. It was partially financed by the, the city of Minneapolis and partially financed by the Vikings. It was essentially a joint financing mechanism. And, you know, that comes with a lot of challenges. You have a public entity that has very, you know, they, they funded a certain amount. You have a private entity which, which comes at it from a different approach. They're looking for their ROI. They're all looking for that, but at the, from the public, it's a fixed amount and they need to stay within those budgets. Um, and that was something actually early on that also drove some of the solution because while we also felt that the ETFE roof was the right solution because it actually solved the problem, it actually met the criteria for what they wanted to achieve, it also was a significant savings. A traditional retractable roof, roof probably would cost them anywhere from 100 to 200 million dollars. The, the, the pivoting doors and the, and the ETFE roof was around 20 million dollars. We had to look at the components, uh, how they would come together, would they be visible, would they not be visible? Um, wh what did the different systems we could use to move these doors, how would they impact the, the amount of time it took and the life cycle of the equipment? That data we had from our designers, we had to share that with lots of manufacturers so we could see how are you gonna meet our criteria. The days of holding onto data as if it is uh, power is, is, are gone. I think we see data as currency. It actually puts us in the marketplace. We share it, we want it to be shared and that actually helps drive innovation. The process that we put in place was incredibly challenging to say we're going to innovate, we're going to collaborate, and we're going to hit a criteria that isn't about meeting codes, it's meeting the aspirations of the owners and the designers. Uh, and that's the most uh, the rewarding thing is that we did it. Experience of the fans is exactly what we had hoped for. They feel like they're outside depending, regardless of what the weather is, except when they don't want to be outside. If it's 80 degrees, they're very thankful that the doors are closed, the sun is streaming in, and the air conditioning that comes down and wafts the seating area makes them feel like it's 72. When it's 10 below with the doors are closed and the sun streaming in and it's naturally heated from the elements, they feel very happy that it's 30, 40, 50 degrees. This episode was brought to you by Sage. Click to subscribe and see more at BuiltWorlds.com.